Hello, denizens of the internet. It seems my gear porn video hit a nerve, and I meant a good nerve. The premise of the video was that not only are men being sidelined from some of our favorite pop culture movies and TV shows, but so is the gear that men, in particular, enjoy seeing, as exemplified by Iron Man 1. The MCU doesn't seem to have much interest in gear. Thanks for the great comments about how much you miss gear porn. What the heck happened to it? Of course, there are exceptions, such as the most recent Top Gun Maverick, but you waxed nostalgic for shows such as The A-Team and Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, which were filled with amazing, cool gear to enjoy. Of course, the one show that really highlighted your love of gear was MacGyver. When was the last time you saw a recent Marvel or Star Wars property that stopped to arm up or invent something to save the day? Although the last episode of Andor had some tinkering and soldering and a bomb, but it, it wasn't the fun stuff I'm referring to. And apparently Wakanda Forever has that new Iron Man girl doing some stuff, but I haven't seen it. Sure, uh, you could point to Iron Man 3, but, and, and this is just my thing, there has to be some believability in how the gear works, is put together or, or fixed. In, in three, the suit was made up of tiny parts, each with its own jetpack. And that was silly, even in the context of a superhero movie, which is silly to begin with. Then the MCU gave us nanotech and infested Iron Man, Spider-Man, and, and Black Panther, and, and the most recent Black Spade House Cat. I'll, I'll come back to nanotech later. Thor's hammer was treated with reverence. When his sister uh, Hela crushed Molnir, we had a visceral, emotional reaction to it. A, a metaphorical crushing of a man's nutsack. But again, that might have been just me. Many movies that portray a smart, sassy inventor girl provide her with a perfunctory few moments of hand-waving, computer-in-the-air stuff, and that's it. Wh whatever she's been working on is done, and it's fabulous. It's not like women never took the time to arm up. Ripley armed up an alien, taping weapons together for the final battle in Aliens. The grunts with their big guns and counter body weight suit devices were very cool. Vasquez was particularly badass. Movies and TV shows would devote a considerable time to gear. Don't, don't, don't you feel we've lost that? Disney's The Absent-Minded Professor starring Fred McMurray was all about the invention of flubber. Japanese TV shows, especially the wonderful Ultraman and the vast Toei Empire that included Kamen Rider, that would highlight a new gun, a sword, an amulet that obviously you could purchase in, in Japan, as, as well as the characters themselves. And, and that brings me to a, a, another major point. Another fallout from ignoring gear porn is plummeting toy sales. Figurines of your favorite characters are, are just not enough, especially the ones from the Disney-era Star Wars that have been collecting dust on merchants' shelves. What new cool gear or spaceships did these Star Wars give us? Nothing! And, and don't get me started on that stupid Kylo Ren lightsaber with the ridiculous and very dangerous flamey hilt. Let's run down some of the shows and movies you sent me as examples that offered great gear porn, in no particular order. James Bond. Who didn't love Q showing Bond all that, all the inventions that he was eventually going to destroy? MacGyver, of course. A-Team were constantly building things that they would shoot out of the back of their van. Hunt for Red October. The Submarine was one of the main characters. And the same with Das Boot, one of the best movies of all time. Thunderbirds, Fireball XL5. What would Batman be without his utility belt? Commando, starring Arnold. Who, who can forget him arming up? 
The Terminators. I already mentioned aliens, but that exosuit fight at the end. Come on. The original Star Trek made many gadgets famous. Tricorder, medical scanner, phaser, communicator, shuttlecraft. Has any Star Trek since given us that much bounty? No. And, and don't get me started on that stupid holodeck. Apollo 13. The movie was total gear porn, grim, back to the future, and the iconic DeLorean. The car was the star. 2001, a space odyssey, of, of course. Matrix, the lobby scene. Airwolf, that copter was sexy. Knight Rider, a talking car, man. Robocop, Inspector Gadget, hell, it was in his name. The best gear from Toy Story was made by Sid. The lavish detail of Peter Jackson's swords and armor from Lord of the Rings. And he stopped to show it to us. The characters would take stock of their weapons because he took pride in Weta's handiwork. Rings of power, the armor was laughable, and Galadriel gave up her brother's sacred dagger and said, fuck it, just melt it. So... That's just a small sampling of shows that gave us some of that gear porn joy. And let me finish off by discussing that damn MCU nanotech. Suddenly, we had armor and skin-tight suits that could cover a body in seconds and, and afford it almost complete invincibility. It could heal itself. The nano gauntlet made by Tony Stark, Bruce Banner, and Rocket Raccoon could resize itself to fit anyone, including the Hulk. Spidey's nano suit could give Spider-Man multiple legs and all kinds of silly shit at the flick of the script writer's keyboard. There were some rules, but they could also be broken as needed. It took no time to deploy in case adding tension of having to get on a suit would have been too much. Wakanda, anyone? It could heal itself. No more running off to lick one's wounds or find a clever way to fix things. Suddenly, Tony's Iron Man Mark LXXXV armor was not particularly interesting. Thankfully, it didn't turn him into Superman, and Thanos beat him up pretty good, but it removed the ingenuity that was Iron Man's trademark. And one final thing. Many women commented that they love gear porn and not just the ones with two D cells. So Marvel, Lucasfilm, DC, Hollywood in general, give us our gear porn back. Till next time, denizens, be seeing you. <laughs>